What's up guys, it's Josh here at The Pickle Jar and today we're asking the question, do you need to sacrifice quality when speed painting miniatures? Let's dive right in. Now speed painting isn't a new idea. Getting armies or teams painted up in a short space of time is something that's been around as long as I can remember. Sometimes it's to get ready for a tournament, sometimes it's a test to see how much you can paint, Sometimes you just need to get a project done and off of your desk before it drives you insane. But usually there's a drop off in quality. A sacrifice that has to be made in order to get stuff done quickly. I guess it makes sense. You can't paint things quickly whilst also making them look like they are competition entries. So it comes down to a balance of what matters more, speed or quality. My argument is, why not both? I've had these Marvel miniatures sat waiting to be painted since before Christmas. It was meant to be my Christmas project, but then I ate too much and did all the things that you normally do at Christmas and I didn't really do any painting. So here they are, built and primed and ready for some paint to go on them, finally. Now with the topic of today's video in mind, I've decided to put the new Army Painter Speed paints to the test. Now I've only used a few of these in a previous video and I wanted to give more of the range a go to really give a useful opinion back to you guys. I've seen a few different videos from posts painting entire models in one colour, but realistically that's not how we paint things. So let's put them to the test and let's use them properly. Now my preferred method of painting, especially if I'm wanting to get things done quickly, is to use things like contrast paint as a base coat and then highlight up from there. They flow and cover very easily and speed paints for the most part fall under the same level of usefulness in that regards. The one thing that I preferred about the speed paints was the lack of tide marks that they leave once they dry. I generally try and be fairly precise and deliberate with the paint placement but having that extra bit of security that they won't leave nasty marks if I mess up is nice and it allowed me to work a little faster without worrying too much. Now I know a lot of people are saying that speed paints and contrast paints are not the same thing and on a technical level that might be true, they are probably very different. But the reality is however that these are both advertised and seen as doing the same thing. It's one coat that does your shading, your mid turns and your highlights. Now. I've never been a fan of using contrast paints in this way and I won't use speed paints in this way. I find that they do the shadows and the mid-tones well enough but the highlights have always been lacking for me with contrast paints. The speed paints do do a better job I have to admit but they still need a little bit of work over the top for me for the highlights which is why I'm happy to use them this way. Now applying the base coats, I was really impressed with all of the colours that I used. Everything covered really nicely, leaving rich layers for me to work on top of with further highlights later on. I think if I had to pick a favourite, it'd probably be the blues as my personal favourites, but I was happy with how all of the colours looked. Another standout that I have to mention as well is the magenta that I used on Baron Zemo's mask. That was nice and vibrant, exactly what I wanted. I wanted to see how they performed over a metallic base coat. So for Iron Man, I started with a silver base coat and then I applied the red and the yellow speed paints over the top. This would give him that metallic look without it being too in your face. The matte finish on the speed paints does dull down the metallic base coat a little, but there's still enough showing through and I actually really like the effect this gives for this model in particular. I guess if you are wanting more of a glossy finish to show more of that metallic off, then you could always mix in some gloss medium or probably just stick with contrast paints because they do tend to dry a little bit more on the satin and glossy side than speed paints do. But for this model in particular, I'm actually really happy with how this looks. With the base coats down, I had spent about 20 minutes to half an hour on each model depending on how much detail they'd got on them. Now that's pretty good going, especially when each model is individual so there's no batch painting here. You could quite easily leave them at this stage if you're happy with them, but I wanted to just go that extra step and add some brighter highlights just to really help them pop. Now I've seen a lot of reports about speed paints reactivating when painting over the top of them. Now I hadn't had any issues with the model that I'd done previously, but I wanted to really test it out. So I started adding highlights without adding a varnish layer. Now I'm not sure if it's because I only put thin layers of speed paint on, or if it's because I was doing thin scratchy highlights, 
but I had no issues at all with the speed paint reactivating. Now I've used a good chunk of the range at this point, so it's not like it's an isolated test just using one paint. I used the Procryl paints for the highlights, which are pretty thin, so maybe that factored in too. Now, I'm not a chemist, so I've got no idea what the reasons are for why they do or don't reactivate. All I know is that I haven't had a single paint reactivate on me, which after the posts that I've seen elsewhere on the internet had, had me reluctant to invest further in speed paints, but safe to say my mind is well at ease now. After I finished recording this video, I actually painted up an ultramarine as well, which I put an oil wash, highlights and all sorts of stuff over the top of a speed paint base and again had zero reactivation issues, so I guess I'm just doing something right. In the end, I spent around an hour on each model. Are they competition standard? Absolutely not. Do they look decent at arm's length on the tabletop? 100% yes. This is the kind of middle ground that I like to strike for the bulk of my armies. It's not the fastest paint job. I know people out there that can paint an army in this amount of time. But it's also not to the point where each model takes a week to do. For individual character models, I really don't think that an hour is too bad at all. Using products like the new army paint or speed paints does help speed up painting. The clue is kind of in the name. For getting base coats down, with a bit of shading thrown in too, they are spot on. I'm a massive fan of them, not leaving ugly tide marks, and I really like the muted matte finish that they dry to as well. Speed paints are yet another tool in my hobby case, and they are one that I'm looking forward to using more of in the future. That's gonna do it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like down below. And if you're brand new, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you want to help support the channel, there are our affiliate links down below in the description. And if you want to get more involved with our community, check out our free Discord link down there as well. I want to say a massive thank you to all our current channel members. You guys are absolutely amazing. And it really does mean a massive amount that you guys are helping to support us. So thank you very much. That's gonna do it from this one. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, enjoy your hobby. Oh,